Medial branch radiofrequency ablation is a procedure that destroys the nerve that innervates the facet joint. After that is done, it reduces the patient's pain, thus making them more active and functional. Ideal candidates for this procedure are patients who report axial low back pain, that is pain in their low back with little to minimal pain in their legs. They often report stiffness in their low back and pain with extension type maneuvers. Patients that are not candidates for this procedure are those that have malignancies of the spine, that have had infections of the spine, or are on blood thinners and are unable to come off the blood thinners. This process is a three-step process which takes place over three separate appointments. The first two injections are to determine what the pain generator truly is. We basically block the medial branch nerve. We assess the patient's pain after the procedure, and if they report at least 50% reduction of their pain on two separate occasions with two separate local anesthetics, we then proceed to the ablation procedure. Patients should expect a reduction of their pain after the procedure, which can start anywhere from two to six weeks after the procedure is completed. Once that is done, we get patients into physical therapy to strengthen their core muscles, work on weight loss and exercise in order to get the patient in better shape to prolong the effect of the procedure. The nerve can grow back and it can start growing back anywhere from six months to two years after the procedure. Usually the older you are, the longer it takes to grow back. And sometimes when it grows back, it does not mean that the patient will have pain when it grows back. You can have this procedure repeated multiple times, but there are diminishing returns with each subsequent procedure. It's a very common procedure. However, I think it's underutilized, especially in the elderly population who suffer from chronic low back pain on a daily basis. They are ideal candidates for this procedure. It'll help them reduce their pain and increase their function. Here at UPMC, in our treatment of low back pain, the first thing we attempt to do is identify the pain generator. Once we can do that, we can tailor therapies, including physical therapy, injection therapy, and sometimes even surgery towards the pain generator. We work here as a group in an integrative approach among the specialties in order to treat the patient as a whole. What I think physicians need to know about this is to identify patients that have low back pain, to let them know that there is a viable treatment, non-surgical, to help reduce their patient's pain.